My name's Gareth. Uh, this is Elgar Farm, uh, which is my parents-in-law with a dairy. And then on the same land, Tonya and I have the grain family, which is the all the grains, fresh flour, um, lentils, linseed, all that sort of stuff. Tonya's folks came over from Bavaria about uh, 30 years ago. Um, there was no other organic dairy in Tasmania. Uh, they came here on their own with four kids. They set up the dairy immediately converted it to organic, um, just with a herd of about 100 cows, um, and started making cheese. It was really small, uh, but it just slowly got, got bigger and bigger and more well known. Uh, it was really hard to sell the smelly cheeses back in the early days, um, but especially in the, other, in the last five years, as soon as we come out with a more mild cheese, People don't want it. People want all the strong tasting cheese now. So I think people's, you know, palate is changing. It's a mixture. So it's, it's tasting it, like it's an art form. Um, but then science has kind of caught up to what was already just done. And yeah, the way that we make cheese today, yeah, has to be a lot more scientific you need pH meter, you need you know salt meter, you need to test everything. Um, there's a recipe for every different cheese. Every, every different cheese that we have all starts with the same milk from our cows. It all starts with the same salt and the same cultures which we produce on the farm. Most commercial dairies will buy in a specific culture whereas we use the same culture. It's just a way we just treat the cheese in a different way to favour certain bacteria. So raising the temperature by one degree and holding it there for you know, 25 seconds longer will favour a different type of bacteria. Or adding a tiny bit more salt, leaving a whole wheel in a salt bath for a few more minutes will favour, or a few more days, will favour different bacteria. Um, and that that's basically the, the science of it. You start with the same product, but you just treat it in a different way to favour um, the type of fermentation that you want. And that's where the art comes in. It's like, is that, is that right? No? Leave it a bit longer? Yeah. For the last four years I have been, since Tonya and I have started doing the grains, uh, that's kind of taken over my life. So now that's what I do entirely uh, and sell the cheese. So it's Tonya's uh, dad and mum and two brothers and, and apprentices uh, that do all the cheese making, milk bottling, uh, some of the cultured products, mascarpone, sour cream, quark and yogurts. Um, and it's just Tonya and I that do the grains, yeah. Uh, we started growing about five years ago. Tonya and I had a child and we, um, I was always involved in farming, um, but we wanted to move back to the farm to be closer to, um, you know, grand, grandparents. Uh, and yeah, so we started growing grain just on a small scale. This year for the first time we eventually had enough to, to sell. Uh, we bought ourselves a little stone mill. Um, the dairy was also not, uh, not operating for a couple of years and we were, all, we were thinking of a way, how can we, you know, what sort of, can we diversify because we can't sell dairy. Uh, what else can we do in the meantime? Um, and yeah, so we started the, the grain family where we grow a large variety of grains on a very small area. Uh, we, we lease about eight hectares of her parents um, where we grow like six or eight different varieties of grain, spelt, wheat, rye, which we do into flour, uh, oats, lentils and linseed, which we sell as whole grain, rolled oats, um, and then a few other trial crops which we're trying, beans, um, corazon, barley, all sorts of stuff. So we'll just see how they go. And there's a there's a lady at the market who's interested in making a, um, a tempeh. This is where your fermentation link comes in.
from the from the lentils. So we're yet to see how that goes. An apprentice coming to the farm, they will learn everything right through from herd management, grazing management, fencing, um, crop rotations, um, sowing, you know, soil management, like all the farming side of stuff. And because the, the factory is on the farm, they'll learn that whole downstream processing side, which is, yeah, where, where the factory and, uh, yeah, when they, they'll learn a bit about, you know, what happens to milk when you put a culture in it and you leave it at room temperature, you know, like our body temperature basically, which is the best condition for living, you know, microbes. Um, so they'll, they'll get, you know, con basic con concepts about how, how cheese is made and how things ferment basically, yeah. Um, as well as marketing, like they, are, they sometimes come to the markets, deliveries, they'll see that side of it too, yeah. I think it's becoming quite trendy. I, probably in a couple of years, no one will want to eat anything that's not fermented. Um, <laughs> it tastes good. I believe it's supposed to be good for you. Um, certainly, certainly a lot of, so many different, uh, there's so many different products that are fermented and I think in Australia in general we're only just sort of beginning to kind of appreciate how good fermented stuff is. Like it's much more of a tradition in Europe to, uh, yeah, to ferment pretty much everything. It's such a good way of preserving stuff. So, yep. Yeah.